Let's rank the Revolutionary Army from the weakest to the strongest. Now in the anime, we are in the Reverie and the Reverie revolves around the Revolutionaries, the Marines. So I think it's a good time to make a video ranking the Revolutionary Army. If you enjoy this video and you do enjoy One Piece, please leave a like, comment and subscribe to the channel for more One Piece content. I'm the one Straha and let's get right into this video. <laughs> Now, for the sake of this video, we are only going to be discussing named and relevant characters. For example, we're not going to be talking about characters that are not named and, for, and characters that are named but have only been shown once and not really that important to the story. This list is also going to contain former members of the Revolutionary Army, but it will not contain allies to the Revolutionary Army. For example, Robin won't be counted in this video. But let's start. Coming in at number 11 is Hawk the Fishman, okay? Hack is basically the fishman that's always partnered with Koala. We've seen him in Dressrosa. He uses fishman karate. He even taught it to Koala. Um, the reason I don't put him higher on this list is because the other characters on this list are I see as much more useful and stronger. Now, I'm, inclu I'm including utility and strength as well because in One Piece, util utility is very is a necessity. We also haven't seen Hawk do much. He has he did lose to Bartol Bartolomeo. Uh, he punched his shield and he lost that pretty easily. So nothing really impressive from Hack, but I do like him. I think he's pretty cool. As the weakest member of, of a crew, that's pretty good. Coming in at number 10 is Inazuma. Now, if you don't remember who Inazuma is, remember in Impel Down, there was that split haired guy who had like half orange, half white hair color. He has the snip snip fruit or the choki choki no mi. Uh, basically, allows him to cut anything like it's paper. He could cut concrete, he could cut uh, wood, anything he wants. So it's a very useful fruit. As I said, I'm putting utility, I'm counting it to your power. Also, he could use this as a defense. He could cut uh, stone and then put it up as a shield. He could do so much with it. And the reason I'm putting him above Hack is because we haven't seen him really lose in a fight. While at the other hand, we have seen Hack lose. And, I, and he's partnered with uh, Ivankov, so I assume he's pretty strong. Coming in at number 9 is Koala. Koala is a fishman karate expert. She's also very good at hand-to-hand -hand combat. She is very strong. She's partnered with Sabo. And the reason I'm putting her higher than Hack and Inazuma, even though Hack, I believe, was the one that trained her in fishman karate, is just because she's partnered with Sabo. And the person you're partnered with, you usually kind of have to have not relative strength towards, but you have to be able to kind of keep up. You know what I mean? For example, you're not going to partner some random revolutionary with Sabo. You're going to partner someone that could actually kind of keep up with him. Coming in at number eight is our first commander. Now you guys will be like, okay, you're crazy. How is this guy number eight? Listen, we haven't seen much of the commanders and there's former members on this. So once you see the former member who's on this and the other members that are on the list above this guy, you're going to be like, okay, I agree. So number eight is Lindbergh. Lindbergh is the basically the mink scientist. We believe he's a mink. We don't really know. So he probably could use Electro and all that stuff. I might actually switch him with number seven, but he's as of eight and seven. Eight and seven, in my opinion, are like literally around the same. He's the scientist of the group. We've seen him using some ice gun in the latest episode. We saw him using that. So he's like the Vegapunk of the Revolutionary Army. Coming in at number seven is another commander. As I said, number seven and eight are very close. I could I could switch them around back and forth. Is Bello Betty. Bello Betty has the cheer cheer fruit. Basically, she's the flag bearer. She could wave her flag and make everyone more, encourage everyone to fight. And this is a very useful fruit for a revolutionary army because she needs people to fight for her side. Okay, to fight on their side. You have if you have Bello Betty, that's a very useful fruit. And that's the reason I'm putting her at number seven. We haven't seen anything from the combative side of this fruit or we haven't seen if she knows hockey or anything else like that so that at this moment she's still number seven on my list she could go up depending on if she has hockey or not coming in at number six is another commander one of my favorite commanders though karasu the northern commander karasu has some type of crow fruit i don't know if it's a zoan he has the ability to remove people's weapons for example the crows flock off his body and they go steal the weapons from other enemies he also the revolutionary army communicates with the crows instead of how everyone else communicates with the news crew so it's kind of like a you know a more incognito incognitive uh type of communication that they have coming in at number five is ivankov imporial ivankov we all know who that is uh the person with the hormone hormone fruit we don't know if it's a guy or a girl we have no idea uh, now, with the Hormone Hormone Fruit, Ivankov is able to change other people's genders, but he is able to do so much more than that. He is able to supplement hormones into you that allow you to basically heal faster. He's able to give uh, energy hormones. He's able to do a lot of things. He's a very supportive character, but he's also very strong because he knows Newcomer Kempo. Uh, he knows Deathwink and Hellwink, which is basically when he blinks, he's able to basically shoot this projectile at you. Uh, I don't. I feel like that's like a sort of like it's kind of like a 
form of a finger pistol in some degree. And we know how much Ivankov has helped Luffy through his journey uh, from the beginning and we're seeing him now in the anime. Ivankov has been there for a while. So that's why I'm putting him at number 5 above the two commanders. Just because we haven't seen enough of the command, the three, can three commanders, my bad. Above three commanders, just because we haven't seen enough of those commanders at the moment yet. Coming in at number four is the final commander, Morley. Now, Morley, the reason I put him so high above all the other commanders is because two, two things. First of all, he is a giant and he has a double fruit. And not only just some random double fruit like Bello Betty's supportive double fruit, he has a combative double fruit. For example, he could turn anything into clay. His double fruit is known as the Oshi Oshi no Mi. Basically, he could mold anything like clay, okay? So he can move the ground like clay. And we found out that in Impel Down uh, level 5.5, which is basically the new Kama Land, it was because of Morley. Morley was the one that made that new Kama Land. And Morley has been to Impel Down. And he actually has escaped Impel Down. Now, the reason why they don't count him as the second person to escape Impel Down is because nobody knows that he escaped it. To the, to the government's eyes, it just looked like he disappeared inside the prison. Morley is also a giant, so he has that strength. And we haven't seen a giant with a Delfu in such a long time. Uh, we know that San Juan Wolf is a giant with a Delfu, and we know that Morley is a giant with a Delfu. Coming in at number three is the former member of the Revolutionary Army, Bartholomew Kuma. Now, Kuma is a very powerful person. We've seen him basically take on all of the Straw Hats pre time skip and basically demolish them. He has the Pop Pop Fruit, which basically allows him to repel anything. If someone attacks him, he could just put his paw up. Paw up and it basically reflects and he could even repel air he could repel himself he could repel others we know what kuma could do he is a very powerful member now we don't know if he has any type of hockey i, I believe he might have hockey i'm not 100 percent sure but he's been a part of the revolutionary army for a very long time and i still think that he might be secretly working under the revolutionary army uh it's just that that we don't really know what's going on with him at the moment coming in at number two is the second in command Chief and Staff, Sabo. Now, the reason I'm putting Sabo above Kuma is because Sabo also knows hockey. He also has a very powerful Dull Fruit. Uh, he knows that dragon type of fighting style. You know that dragon taught him dragon claw, arm and hockey, dragon claw. Then he puts the flame wheel up uh, around it. He's a Logia user. Now, you might be like, okay, but Logias in the new world, they don't really help that much. They still are very useful. Um, if, if you learn observation hockey, like for example, like Future Sight, you're still able to use your uh the, the intangibility of a logia because you can morph your body around the attack and even let it still pass through you now obviously we don't know if sabo has future sight but him having hockey that's the only reason i'm putting him above kuma until it's confirmed i'm not gonna put kuma above him now kuma is a cyborg but that doesn't really that doesn't really do much against hockey i feel like hockey is just way better uh, a natural better thing to have and the final member on this list is dragon now dragon we have no feats for we haven't seen anything he's done we just have lore we're basically going off lore and off of lore he's number one obviously he's the leader of the revolutionary army so you're gonna have to put him at number one he's luffy's father uh he's the most wanted man quotation marks in the world so obviously i'm gonna put him number one he has to be that strong he has to i'm, I'm saying he i'm gonna go out and say he's top five i think that's not a stretch i think that's pretty possible maybe even top three but other than that i hope you guys enjoyed this video about the revolutionary army if you guys want more of these type of videos where i rank these groups from weakest to strongest i might do the marines but oh my god the marines are gonna take so long because you know how many marines we know we know hina kobe uh, a lot of marines okay that's probably gonna take a long if i do that it's probably i'm gonna probably do that when i have a lot of time on my hands okay um but yeah other than that it was a pretty I, I enjoyed making this video i hope you guys enjoyed it too make sure to subscribe leave a like comment and i'll see you guys next time the one straw hat and i'm gone